I'm here with our Aduco expert, John Fawkes, and we're going to be discussing three top trends in the pharmaceutical industry at the moment. So, John, over to you. What's your first top trend at the moment in the industry? Thanks, Alex. Well, uh, the first issue, and probably the biggest issue, is around the way that clinical trials operate. Um, our sector is totally reliant on very large, extremely expensive international trials of medicines to get them approved for launch. The requirements are getting higher and higher for, for evidence from clinical trials. But in the last probably 10 years or so, the routine regular model for running clinical trials is broken. It's not working so well anymore. And critically, it's getting very difficult to get patients to want to join a trial. And secondly, to keep them on the trial until the sort of trial finishes. Um, and not exactly sure why it is, but it's to do with the patient's um, higher expectations, if you like, for, for their own quality of life. And so we have to realize that um, the old model involved patients having to travel sometimes several hundred miles to a, a center, if you like, a big hospital in, in a big city um, to, to, do, to do a trial. Involved a lot of hanging around. It also involved actually a lot of procedures that were very convenient for our industry and for the doctors to get the maximum amount of sort of great evidence that might have been sort of uncomfortable, um, invasive, um, uh, inconvenient for patients. And especially if patients had to, uh, you know, weren't staying in the hospital for weeks on end and they were visiting the hospital. So there's a scenario, for instance, of a patient, you know, driving or being driven 100K to a hospital waiting for three hours, getting to see a, a consultant, having an interview uh, for 20 minutes, check, 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 yes, all fine, and then having to go home again. And increasingly, patients are getting frustrated about this and uh, not wanting to participate. And so what's a appearing throughout the world is a, is a, is a new an aggressively pursued topic now. It's called the decentralized clinical trial. And it means that um, a lot of things. It means that increasingly, and this came about because of the pandemic, really, where the big COVID vaccine trials blazed the way for this big time, that patients are being and want to be treated at home where it's possible. The industry's got to come to them rather than them coming to the big hospitals. Um, they're being consulted about the procedures involved in the clinical trial and increasingly patients and patient action groups are saying to the industry, no, that's not possible. You shouldn't do that. You should make more effort to make it convenient for the patients, make it understandable for the patients and um, support the patients a bit more. Um, Things like um, the way I'm doing this now, which is on a Zoom call, um, is a perfectly feasible bit of technology. If you need to monitor a patient and ask them how they're doing, you don't need to the come, for them to come miles and miles to the hospital. You can use the media we already have. Uh, we've been using it for years. It works very well. The big challenge to all this is not so much any of the technology the big challenge is the culture of the industry, the industry and the physicians out there in healthcare that it works closely with are rooted more in a traditional hospital type model. But the industry has realized that it's got to change sort of all over the world, really. If that doesn't happen, then we won't be able to recruit patients. Um, and we won't be able to do our clinical trials and we won't be able to generate the increased amount of evidence required by the regulators for, for new medicines. And this is wrapped up really in this 
philosophy called decentralized trials. There's a huge communications industry going on around the world now about decentralized trials. It's the biggest um, development. And there's a, there's a, what you may hear is another sort of slight version of it. There's, there's the decentralized and there's the hybrid. The hybrid is where there has to be at least some element of, of central work with the patient but there is a there is a large decentralized element that they can, they can be at home, um, receive visits or calls. They can use all sorts of technology for dosing, sampling, um, measuring, interviewing, um, and all the things that are done in, in trials. So that's probably the the biggest trend right now. Brilliant, thanks, John. And what is your second trend um, in the industry at the moment? Well, this is another huge one, and it covers a mass of, of different aspects of the industry, and it's digitalization. Um, and this ranges from um, right at the early stage in research, where um, now, you know, globally, scientists are not just using, you know, templates, oh, sorry, um, uh, test tubes and well plates and solutions and chemistry and, and traditional biological techniques. They're increasingly using things like virtual reality to design molecules, and in particular, using artificial intelligence, using uh, searching algorithms to look at monstrous amounts of genetic information to try and find correlations between gene types and diseases and things like that. Um, but this ranges right through to the sort of technology that's now used in, for instance, in diagnostic work. You're aware that there's so many um, so-called wearables available now. You can get a watch that obviously records your heart rate and sometimes your blood pressure and things like that. A Fitbit does that, an Apple Watch does that. But there are many other wearable devices for instance, at the, the cutting edge. So if someone's got a neurological problem, a mobile phone or a watch or something like that can record their um, speech patterns, their movements, their, their body postures and their body movements and things like that to track anomalies and, and actually diagnose problems and monitor um, if someone's being treated for a neurological condition. You can monitor that sort of thing. There are devices being developed that you swallow that will actually send radio signals out. And, and there's, a, there's a huge amount of stuff going on, a huge amount of possibilities. The biggest thing this leads to eventually is real-time information, a huge amount of real-time information so that you can monitor a patient with a disease and being treated with the medicine 24-7 and generate data on a continuous basis. Then you have to use artificial intelligence to, to look at it and, and, you know, and, and examine it and draw conclusions. But the possibilities are immense for this sort of thing. So that's the, probably the next hugest trend, as it were. Finally, what is your third, um, third trend for pharmaceuticals at the moment? OK, well, this is a difficult one because there probably isn't one that really stands out as, as, as number three, because there's a lot of innovation going on everywhere. But I would say it's in the in the ways of working of the industry in that um, it's very inefficient. Uh, the, the farm industry is has an enormous amount of waste in it. Um, the, the most obvious one is the number of projects that are going on at an early stage in, in pharma for every one new drug that appears on the market. I mean, it's an, an enormous amount of attrition. And that's sort of built into the system, I suppose. But surrounding that is, is quite a lot of sort of inefficient ways of working. So probably another big trend is the is the around the word agility so there's a lot of industries that have got much much lower margins than pharma uh, such as construction such as fast-moving consumer goods um, such as airlines 
and things like that, which have developed all sorts of efficiency practices and systems, uh, often coming under the banner of, of agility, agile working, if you like. And there's been a sort of an excuse for um, our ways of working in pharma for many years that because of the projects in pharma that are so long, they're years and years long, and you often don't know the result of a, of a project until right at the end, you can't apply a so-called so agility systems to it. And also the, the other thing is there's so many projects running at the same time in a pharma industry. Um, it's not sort of one big construction project. It might be 200 little research projects, then 40, uh, all running simultaneously. So, you know, dividing up time between these things is very, very difficult. Nevertheless, nevertheless, the industry is not as productive as it used to be. There are far less molecules appearing as new products compared to the number of projects around per year actually being released onto the market than there used to be, you know, per dollar spent, as it were. So it's a low, the productivity is, if you like, it's going down. So companies are looking at all sorts of ways, basically for bits of the industry to collaborate much better and to use, um, you know, just better systems and better decision-making systems and so on. Brilliant. Thank you, John, for your top three trends in the pharma industry um, today. Thank you very much for your time. It's been great speaking to you. A pleasure. Thanks, Alex. Cheers. Cheers.